helps most women start a business? Is it passion, money, or freedom? Welcome to Female Founders, the podcast that takes you behind the scene with women who are founders and CEOs to help you start and scale a successful business of your own. I am your host, Nagelia de Ravin. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Female Founders. In this episode, we are going to have a lovely conversation with Barbie Swenson. Barbie is a career coach and founder of Soar Career Services. With more than 20 years of experience, she has been working towards bridging the gap between employers and employees and helping people figure out what to do next. Good morning, Barbie. You have you know, when I read about you, it's very interesting what you are doing. You have over two decades of experience uh, as an executive recorder. And now you decided to move forward with your own, creating your own space, your own business that can actually help other people to help them go and get a better position and uh, like CEO and executives, which is very interesting to me. But I am also excited to learn more about how are you helping people achieve their dream career through different expertise because it's, it's a very big market out there, you know? And um, it's a, di- a lot of things to actually try to tangle at once. And as a woman in business, that can be a lot of work. So I'm super excited to learn all of the things that you are doing. So my first question for you, you have over 20 years of working um, for corporate uh, companies and also, well, corporate in general, <laughs> and hiring a workforce. What made you quit and decide to start your own business? Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much, Nagalia, for uh, for having me. And I really appreciate the work that you do uh, in highlighting women and just showing, you know, us all that, you know, if if we have that dream, if we have that wish, we can do it. So hats off to you for that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Welcome. So with regards to what made me take that leap. I've kind of always had an entrepreneur spirit about me, a work ethic about me. And for the most part, in the over 20 years or uh, over 20 years of experience that I've had as an executive recruiter, it was mostly working with a firm. and. So what I mean by that is uh, recruiting firms, and right. uh, and I worked and I and I um, uh, my clients were client companies all over the country, Fortune 500, um, Fortune 100 in some <laughs> cases, companies that I worked with, and then and then I also recruited. So I did both sides of the desk, and I enjoyed that very much. But what I I, I, I was successful with it. I earned several uh, what was called pace setter trips where they sent me abroad for a week and five star hotels and just um, really wonderful times uh, there. I had on stage recognition and awards uh, with the different companies that I work with. So I, I enjoy quite a bit of ex- uh, success, but because I put a lot into it, and what I really found was that uh, what I enjoyed most was help watching people's lives change and, and helping to see legacies change. And so I was able to, in many times when I recruited candidates, bring them back after they left home for the big city and uh, and and now they have a family and they want to move back to the small city and be with family. I was able to help with that and see that not only change their career and change the company, impact the company in a good way, but also impact their family. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. that just really touched me, and uh, and I wanted more of that. And so that was partly the reason why. I decided to step out into my own business. 
Isn't that excited? <laughs> like when you talk to women, there's always that story behind everything they do. And then just listening to that story kind of like make you feel like, wow, I want to do something else as well for me to help others. So your company, Rally Resume, uh, known as So Call Your Services, offers uh, a lot of different services under the umbrella. Can you kind of collaborate more in all of the things that you are doing? Absolutely, Nagalia. Well, nearly six year, uh, seven years ago, um, when I started my business, I started in January of 2016. And there is a little bit more to that story. It's we want to get into that, but I started out as Ready Resume, and and uh, that was because I was doing resumes, and I was also doing interview preparations, and that was pretty much what I did. And so, uh, but as the years went on, and my clientele grew, and also my client, my clients came back to me and were um, doing bigger and better things with their lives, they, they requested more from me. And so I began to grow in terms of not just the resume, uh, but also doing LinkedIn profiles and, and also career coaching, uh, because that's something really that over the 20 plus years of my recruiting, I did a lot of handholding and career coaching, helping people to to see what what that next step would be for them. So so those are some things that are under the umbrella. I also do an advisory uh, board resumes and I do uh, professional bios for people. And I have had people commission me to to uh, work with them and help them to find uh, recruiters to help them find the right opportunity for themselves. So I seek out um, those that you do what I used to do. And I know, you know, the good ones. When I well, them. <laughs> so, so, uh, so those are some of the unique things that I'm doing in the business. And there will be more things as well. So I'm thinking that's the reason why you, you changed the name from Red Resume, because now you are doing way more than just resume. It's a lot more into it. That's right. Exactly. I felt like Ready Resume had me in a box and I feel like SOAR Career Services is what I want to help my clients do. I want to help them soar in their careers. And I have been able to do that with many of them. So many of them, they come back to me and they keep in touch. And, you know, again, I, you know, that's heartwarming to me. And, um, and, and it, it, it's exciting. It helps me to get up with a smile on my face every day. <laughs> Isn't it why we, we actually leave the corporate with the good money, the, all, all the great insurance and all these things to just go find that peace of mind, that love, that people that just appreciate what you do. You know, that's the, I think that's one Absolutely. of the big, biggest purpose. So now Absolutely. you also mentioned that you do one-in-one, -one you do coaching, but is it like one-in-one yes. -one or is it like a group coaching? Oh, that's, that's a wonderful question, Nagalia. Thank you for asking that. So with the coaching, let's say, for instance, the interview preparation, I call it an interview prep masterclass. And that is uh, because there's two parts to it. And it's a masterclass because I'm a master at it. I have an uh, expertise. Uh, anything that you have done for 10 years makes you an expert. And I have more than double that. <laughs> so, um, so it is a master class and, and it is one on one. Um, the, it, so there's two parts to it. The first part is, uh, one on one with me, an hour, and it's a video, uh, like oh. we're doing. And my clients tell me everything that they're, that makes them nervous or concerned about interviews. It might be the tell me about yourself. Um, question or it could be a gap for whatever reason in the uh, resume or uh, sometimes they're fired uh, from a position and don't know how to address that. Hmm. Maybe they have weaknesses and they're not sure what to say about it. And so there are many reasons, many, many reasons why uh, people uh, want to be coached through um, an interview pre um, 
interview. Once we answer, once I answer those specific targeted questions to that person, we go through a mock interview where I ask them questions, behavioral questions, uh, to, um, and then I critique them after they're done. So they, I, I take off my coach's hat, I put on my hiring manager's hat, and they have to just push through it no matter what. And then uh, I let them know what was wonderful, what was good but could be better, and what we, what we need to work on. And from there, they have homework to do after we're done. So we can get into a lot of different things, uh, salary negotiation, how to close the interview call, uh, what to say, what definitely not to say during an interview, which can be surprising uh, for many people. And then after that, um, I have curated uh, nine different documents from my client wow. uh, to help them continue with the interview preparation so they will have homework uh, and then and they are well aware of how to do it what to do and so many of them come back to me uh, either by email or on my LinkedIn profile they give a recommendation and they say I had so much confidence uh, you know thank you so much for what you were able to help me do so that's, you know, that's one of the uh, coachings that I do. But I also do career coaching. I have people come to me who have been in business for a while and they are ready to make a change, but they're not sure what exactly they want to do and they don't know what is transferable to, to what industry or what field. And in that case, I have a coaching package for them where um, there are several steps that we take through the coaching and it's one-on-one -on -one with me or, or, you know, as my team continues to grow, um, they will be matched with someone that has a similar uh, experience level that I do, but, um, but it's one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with myself and, uh, and then we work through build, you know, building that skills inventory. And, uh, and then we look at the types of opportunities, jobs, careers that they can move into easily with that skill set. And then from there, um, I begin to write the resume because we've now honed in on what is promising for them. And we do interview prep and the LinkedIn profile. So that's all included in that uh, career coach package. So, um, and then there's also uh, networking uh, when you're job searching. And um, with the job searching, sometimes people think it's just job boards uh, that they <laughs> have to, you know. But really, there's just so much more to go into it. And Nagalia, um, to celebrate the the new uh, name, new name change, and you know, um, new changes to the website. I also have a brand new uh, giveaway uh, for anyone coming to my website who is a job seeker and uh, and looking for that perfect job opportunity. I have a five day um, job um, training job a uh, five day job hunting um, training course, and it's free. It's free of charge. Oh, uh, free. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of hours have gone into it. Um, you know, there's PowerPoint. Um, there are, um, uh, there's homework, there's reading assignments, but there's five days of it. And, um, and with that, uh, there, there will be videos as well. So there's a lot of thought and effort that went into that, uh, to help people find jobs. Personally, I don't do that anymore, but because I have that background, um, I felt that that would be some a way that I could help those that are job seeking um, as I'm working on their resumes or, um, you know, whatever it is that they feel the need is. And uh, again, it's free, so uh, they can feel free to do that. It's a five-day um, job hunting sure. uh, exclusive training series that um, that I've put together for them. Will that be uh, good for anyone? Like, for, let's say, from someone that's in a C-level to, uh, to a CEO or to even, not even in a C-level yet? 
I, I yes, indeed. I I believe from college level all the way to C level because. Thank you for that question. You know, because as I uh, as I as we started out, and it made me think about the the um, offer. It is um, networking. Um, how to go about networking and where to start with networking, and and, and what are the avenues and uh, and and the different steps, and then the research and and how do I get to the perfect job opportunity of my dreams and not just take whatever comes along. And so um, if that, if there is a C-level person out there that, you know, is looking for an opportunity, they, they, they've grown up the ranks, but now they're ready for something totally different, which is what I do here. Uh, they want to go after something that is a, a passion of theirs, uh -huh. but they don't, but you know, maybe they're not quite sure how to do it. I believe that this training, uh, five-day training series will absolutely absolutely be a help to them, mid-level, and also those that are just starting out their career as well, because um, many have not been trained that way. Sure They've does. been trained on their subjects, and um, but as far as uh, how to find a job and what to look for, that's on them. <laughs> so, um Career, uh, soar career services to save the day. <laughs> <laughs> Again, another woman saved the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. with with everything that just happened in this world uh, lately, you know, COVID and then uh, the, everything changed. And I think that it's even a lot harder for people who's uh, looking for jobs as well. And not to mention that everything is uh, online, um, remote, uh, doing an interview is remote. Um, so how do you keep yourself and your services updated to help job seekers? All right. Well, um, great question. Great questions. Cause there's a lot built into that. So yes. let's see where I want to tackle that. Um, first of all, the good news is that those that are seeking opportunities remotely, there's never been a better time than now. I have worked remotely many, many, many years in my life. But it started out with me having worked for the employer who was able to see what my work ethic was. And then I feel confident and comfortable with me moving states, moving across state and continuing to work. So, so you know, I have experienced uh, remote work, but that was the background. These days, there, there are websites and there's so many job opportunities for remote people, those that want to work remotely. That's one of the major changes that I've seen. Now, with remote work comes a lot of what you're asking me about in the digital space when it comes to decisions being made as to whom they're going to hire. And so we see, we see what we're doing, the video interview. We even see people having uh, at, um, to download apps and videotape themselves and Ooh. not have someone on the other side, but look at a question, answer the question, and then send that in. And, and then, you know, within interviews, I actually have a couple of, um, on my blog site, on the website, I have a couple of articles that I've written on the many different types of interviews they encourage uh, your listeners um, and readers to take a look at that because there's just so many variations of how interviews are being conducted today. And so, you know, this is something that I, going back to what I said previously, I can help people with because sometimes they've never even been on a Zoom call. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, that's intimidating. And then sometimes it's not one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes you've got a panel or a group in front of you. And how do you address that? 
you know, how do you address a group if you're in person with them? But so, you know, there's phone interviews, there are video interviews, there are video group interviews, there's, uh, and then there may be a face to face interview. And with the face to face, it could be one on one, it could be a, a, a group, it could be a panel. And uh, it could be over a few few different times. And so there's just a lot going on with regards to that. So the good news is if you want to work remote, you can. It's possible. Yes. The bad news is if you don't like <laughs> working digitally, get used to it. <laughs> it's definitely here to stay. It's here to stay. That I agree with. And, and, and I also- keep up to date with it. Uh, Because it's my business, you know, and I have to do my research to keep up to date, but also through my, my, my clients uh, who come to me and let me know what's going on. And also uh, through some of my uh, networking uh, HR people on LinkedIn, we keep each other informed as well. So I network, I, you know, I don't just say you do it, but you know, yeah, I do it as well. So yeah. (laughs) I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. So, you know, with COVID-19 affecting employee as well as the job market, how do you help just seekers navigate the path? Okay, well, uh, one of the ways is, uh, you know, as we just talked about, you know, uh, helping them get through what an interview process would be. Uh, also, just listening to them, what it, what is it that they want? And, you know, uh, do they want to go work uh, in person? You know, do they want to be in a social environment or do they want a remote position? And so, but for the most part, um, they pretty much know what they want with, you know, in this environment. And I just help them to write the best professional uh, resume that represents them that they're proud to send out and and that gets the door open for them. It doesn't get them the job. That's on the individual themselves, but it can help open the door. And so I do that by making sure that the resumes look great, that they are on point, they're professional, they're, you know, uh, they're read and reread so that they're mistake proof and they're exciting to look at. Uh, they have a splash of color in them. Some of them, they have graphics. But I do three formats of resume. So they will have a customizable, customizable word right, uh, resume. They have a PDF. That's what I like to call the eye candy resume. <laughs> and then they have the um, tech resume. And that's the one that I um, instruct everyone to upload uh, for the ATS. Uh, so the ATS is an applicant tracking system. That's what that is. And so anytime a person is asked to upload a resume to a company website, or LinkedIn, Indeed, Career Builder, Dice, you know, whatever it is, then uh, they're uploading it into an applicant tracking system, which then will rank um, yeah. their resume as to whether or not um, this is a match for the position that they're looking for. So your resume may never be seen by human eyes um, because it may not ever have the ranking it needs to get there. And so um, I walk my, each of my clients, my prospective clients through how the resumes are written and why. I think it's important that they understand the process and why. So these are the things that I um, help with in in terms of um, making sure that they have a professionally written, awesome resume and a fabulous LinkedIn profile uh, so that it is search engine optimized, again, like the resume with the right uh, keywords to enhance it to not only as they're looking for jobs, but 
it helps to bring recruiters to them. So that's another way that my services help during this time and others. You know, it's a full-time job. It, your job is looking for a job right now. And, um, and so to have all the help that you can uh, with having recruiters looking for you and coming to you with the right opportunities, not just, you know, because they looked at a title, they didn't understand it, and they think you do the, these things. That, that's annoying. You know, to fend off those kinds of things, you want them coming to you for the right reasons. And when I write those LinkedIn profiles, I write them uh, with that in mind so that you do get that type of traffic. And also it helps to brand you. LinkedIn is the um, biggest social business network uh, or social business media out there. There's no other. Like that's it. True. There's Facebook, but that's that's social media. It's social. But LinkedIn is a business social media. And so um, when you Google a person's name, if they're on LinkedIn, it's going to pop up first. And that is your way of being able to put out into the world what you want the world to know about you. So I help my clients brand themselves um, in a way that they want to progress in their career. And so, um, so those are, you know, some different ways that I help them in, in this <laughs> way. But you know what, listening to you talking, I just realized that resume is a lot of work. <laughs> yes, it is. It totally is. If you know what you're doing, it is. <laughs> it's not just a matter of downloading you know, a template and filling it in. Well, that's what I thought it was the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> they look beautiful. But when it comes to, as I mentioned to you, the um, the ATS system, it can be a nightmare because of all of the different types of formats and bolding and graphics and, oh, you know, and then they want you to put your picture on it. Mm -hmm. Pictures are fabulous on LinkedIn. They are a no-no on your resume. So I encourage everybody, you know, unless you're in the creative space, you know, an entertainer or, you know, um, a musician, a model, you know, in the creative space, you can have your picture on the resume. Otherwise, it's a no-no. And um, please don't do that because HR departments do not like it. It gets wow. them in trouble. <laughs> wow, interesting. So yeah. in 2021 now, would you say that uh, cover letters are still important? Most definitely uh, cover letters are important. Um, uh, you know, I would, especially if you have unique circumstances, hmm. and that can be anything from um, a unique set of, um, a, a unique background that uniquely uh, is in sync with what the company is looking for. Or perhaps there is an, a compelling reason for you to move across country to where this company is located because many companies today have done away with helping people move. They're looking for people in their area or, you know, they'll let you work remotely, but they don't want to spend the money to move you. But if you have a compelling reason uh, to move, uh, then I would say a cover letter would be a great reason to uh, add a um, special type of education. Uh, maybe there is a situation that caused you to have several years um, off out of work. Uh, perhaps you were caring for, um, uh, you know, someone that, a, a parent that was elderly and sickly, or perhaps, um, you know, many other things. You were home uh, taking care of the children, and they're, you know, at an age where now you feel comfortable leaving them in someone else's care and going off to work. So I've had these situations occur, and and uh, so a cover letter would be wonderful in those uh, cases. And necessary when asked for. It's not an option. And some companies um, in their application will ask for them. So make sure you have one to give them. <laughs> 
Is that something you can help with as well? Most definitely. So in my packages, Nagalia, my resume packages, I have three levels. I have an essential level. That's for someone who is uh, just graduated or very recently in the job market, uh, maybe a couple years or so, and just uh, really trying to stand on their legs out there in the professional world. I also have an Elevate resume um, package, and that's the one that most, I find most people, um, most of my clients fall into because they have at least at least five years of experience, but they're more in a managerial level or they're moving into a managerial level. And then there is the elite, and that's the senior, uh, that's the VP to the C level uh, resume. So I mentioned that because in each of those packages, I have a cover letter and follow-up letter customizable Ooh. template that is um, complementary to those packages. It's a hundred and ten dollar value uh, in those packages. If the um, client wants to go with resume only, which they absolutely can, and I have several services a la carte, then they can choose to do a targeted cover letter and. When I say targeted, there's a particular job that they're applying for, a particular position with a particular company, and that's what I write that cover letter in relation to. So, yes, I do cover letters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, Bobby, with all of this experience as a recruiter that you have, what do you think is the major difference uh, between job seekers then and now? Hmm. Okay. Wow. That's a really, um, that's a, that's a thoughtful. I'm question. putting you on the spot here. <laughs> <laughs> so from my point of view, then and now, um, wow, such a difference. <laughs> Let me tell you that then, uh, a person could actually get away with sending a resume via Snail mail, snail mail, and also fax. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I even read that part. <laughs> and they could actually do cutesy things like send a resume that was in a circle uh, with a piece missing, and then you know uh, show up with the other piece, like you've got a. <laughs> Are you serious? And I'm the missing piece of the pie you know, uh, to the employer. So, you know, kind of gimmicky, but, you know, something to help people remind, um, the, remember this person is different and unique, and we need someone like that, quirky. Okay, so that doesn't fly today. <laughs> Not really. I don't think so. Fly today. Uh, snail mail, uh, you know, uh, the job is already filled by the time it gets there. <laughs> you know, we didn't have anything like um, social media. We didn't have, we, we barely had the internet. Um, and not as, and it wasn't sophisticated the way it is today. However, so, you know, companies are out there and they're marketing for, you know, good uh, employees. And, and so they're marketing and they, they are branding themselves, you know, to show that, you know, you know, they're the, the company to join. So it's really different, but there's a lot of great information that people today can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and the main thing is it's so important to ask questions let's say in an interview, but don't ask the obvious questions that you can find on the internet. They're going to think you're lazy or uninterested. And it's fun. It's laughable. It, well, it would be laughable if it wasn't true. You know? <laughs> it's true. That's why I laugh. <laughs> right? Right? So, so that's, you know, there's just an abundance of information 
on LinkedIn, on the company website, on Wikipedia, on, you know, in magazines, uh, industry magazines, in groups. There's just abundance of information and for you to understand what the company is looking for. I mean, there's Twitter, there's, you know, Facebook, there's, you know, you can find out the culture of a company. You can find out. It's just so easy, so much easier today. It really is. That's so. true. It is. But I think I still want this snail mail. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what it might be impactful. If you're going to do anything snail mail, I think it may be impactful to send a follow-up letter uh, or a thank you letter because that's so rare these days. And so, you know, that's something that I still would go ahead and send the email uh, just to get that in there. But it wouldn't hurt to follow up with a, a, a old school card uh, or written hand note. To thank mm. them for their time. That's yeah, special. I'm giving, out, I'm giving out a little, a few jewels here, <laughs> <laughs> but just to thank them for their time because it's going to help jog their memory about you, and um, and you'll stand out, you know, and you want to stand out in a good way, and that's a good way. To I do love it. that one. I love that one. I think it's a good one to do, and um, so according to you, what uh, what is the most important aspect of a job applicant? Oh, okay. Great question, uh, Nagalia. Where are you getting these good questions from? <laughs> I Google them. I love Google. I'm just joking. <laughs> I, I spent so much time on your website. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, at least, you know, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. All right. Um, so with regards to the most important thing an applicant can do, I'm going to say two things, Okay. I'm going to say, make sure you don't have any mistakes on your resume. Make sure everything is spelled correctly. There's no excuse for that. You know, ensure that you've got the right date and um, and also the, the right contact information. And And then the other thing that I would say is very, very, very important. If you're filling out an application, don't feel as though you can pick and choose what you're going to answer hmm. because they're going to choose not to talk to you because what happens with regard, you know, if you don't answer everything on a, an application, if you ignore it, uh, thinking it'll go away or you don't really have an answer for it at the time, um, what that shows an employer is that you could they could be hiring a problem candidate, a problem employee, oh. someone that doesn't follow instructions, someone that uh, goes their own way. That's what that shows. And so always um, make sure to answer questions. Now, some people, you know, get into, you know, sometimes they're confused about what should I say when it comes to the salary part? All right. And so you'll have to come talk to me to find out what to say about that. <laughs> but I encourage you not to leave it blank. All right. It's better to say something than nothing at all. But I can help you say the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that helps people. Don't don't leave it blank. Don't leave it blank. Interesting. Yeah. So um, yeah. I guess you're pretty much I asked so many different questions today. You're probably like, what? What Nagalia is thinking? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just really wanted to um, to understand all the things that because right now the job market changed, especially after COVID, a lot of th things changed and a lot of uh, employees are confused on what's going on, especially someone that's been in, uh, working for one company for 10, 20 years now and she's in the market looking for a new job. So she doesn't know what's going on in 2022 because she's been in the same job. She didn't keep up with that. So you have the experience, you have the expertise that you can help someone understand what to do next. So that's where it's come all the questions. I, and I appreciate your questions. I, 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 I think that they've been great questions, and I, I hope that your listeners appreciate the questions that you've asked on their behalf. Um, and it, the scenario that you've just given is on point um, because 
so many people for um, various reasons uh, who have been on the job for a long time find themselves either thinking about making a move because they're inundated. Um, many companies have downsized so much uh, that um, I talked to someone yesterday that um, it's one person doing the job of 10. Wow. And, her, and, uh, and so where she's been so loyal to the company for so many years, she's feeling bad that she is considering leaving. But, you know, here's another jewel that I want to give to your listeners. The loyalty that you owe is to yourself and to your family. I say work like you're never, like you're going to be there forever, but be ready to leave two weeks from today. And I say two weeks, not tomorrow, not today, because I don't want you to burn your bridges. You never know when you're going to need that employer, whether to come back for another awesome opportunity down in the future or for a referral. So don't burn your bridges, but work like, you know, um, you're going to be there forever, but be ready to leave in two weeks. Because companies, when they have to make their decision about their bottom line, make their decision about their bottom line. And as badly as, you know, some of their people feel about handing you a pink slip, you get it. And the company goes on without you. So make those um, loyal decisions for yourself and for your family. Right. Best advice ever. So now that gets me to another question. Any advice for uh, job seekers? Um, yes, come and see me. <laughs> come and see us at SOAR Career Services. <sighs> uh, we will help you take that career to the, to the height. Um, beyond that, I do have the free training that I mentioned um, that will be up on my website on the home page. And, um, and so that's free of charge uh, to help you. So there's plenty of advice uh, in those five days that you will get. And that's a labor of love. You know, um, many, many, many hours that have gone into that uh, for you, for job seekers. So thank you for asking that question. <laughs> You know, uh, starting a business as a woman, it's not easy. And we all know that we went to the ups and down and uh, difficulty to even get there. Um, any yeah. advice would you have for future uh, women entrepreneurs that are just starting out or thinking about it? I, I have advice for women and also for seniors. Ooh. All right. For, you know, because I'm both. <laughs> and I would say, it's never, it is never too late. If you have a dream in your heart, it's so much better to step out on faith and try it than to always think, I wonder if. Hmm. You don't want to go into your golden years with, I wonder if. I, I would feel so much better going into those years knowing I gave it the best that I had. And I had some good times along the way. And I had some tough times too. <laughs> but that's life. That is life. And as women, we are tough. We do some very hard things, tough things, and we make it through. And and, and most of us make it through with, you know, smiling. Yes, <laughs> you know, anyway, that's true. That's right. And then as seniors, I will say, with, the, with all the experience that I um, have uh, garnered over the 20 plus years uh, that I have a, a, the experience and all of the wonderful pay setter trips and all of the wonderful awards that I won uh, when I started looking uh, for other opportunities. Um, I was getting calls left and right. And when I went in for the interviews, the, the, we had great conversation and all, but um, I wasn't getting the callbacks. And I never, ever experienced that in my career. And I wondered what 
what's going on? <laughs> it just <laughs> never dawned on me until someone said to me, ageism oh, wow. is going on. Companies, and so I will say that companies, you know, if you're experiencing this, companies, many of them out there, many, many of them out there, they are not allowed to, and I, I had them approach me as a recruiter. I want this, this, and this, you know, and I would have to say to them, um, uh, you know, under the law, I can't, I can only give you a qualified person. I can't give you this, this, and this. If that happens, great, but I'm going to give you the most qualified. So the bottom line is um, they were looking for someone that was uh, younger to fit more uh, in with their culture because they had come up with all these really cool, fantastic things for the youth where they had these game rooms and they could bring their laptops and watch TV while they work uh, or play arcade games, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, wow. So cool, you know, for the, for the gen, uh, the gen Z and the, you know, later, uh, earlier millennials and so on and so forth. And so that was the culture, cultural clash was there. And also they could pay them less and Should mold I? them the way that they want to mold them. Uh, and so for all those reasons, I kept hitting that wall. And, <coughs> and rather than continue to hit that wall, I decided now's my time to do the thing that I feel passionate about and give that a try, as opposed to continuing to work for someone else and settle. So, yeah, so that's out there. So I say, you know, if you're experiencing that, if you've got a dream in your heart and you want to, um, you know, try something on your own, go for it. However, I, I help people every day overcome those hurdles. It just so happens that not everyone is an entrepreneur like myself. I could tell you many things that I've done <laughs> as an entrepreneur. <laughs> And so not everyone is that way. And I can absolutely help uh, you if you're experiencing those kinds of hurdles. Oh, thank you, Bobby. That is some great advice. And you know what? There's women out there, not just the seniors, but out there that's in the mid 40s, 50s, you know, that just need the help. So to navigate yeah. uh, finding a new job, because like you said, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. I appreciate you giving me the chance to uh, have this conversation with you and then you. to get to know you a little bit more. Also for our listeners and readers to actually get to know you. I'm sure they are, they are going to love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Nagalia. Um, I, it's just been my pleasure. You have been a breath of fresh air for me. I loved your questions. I, I, I You drew a lot out of me and I hope that um, they were beneficial to everyone. What a great conversation with Bobby. Ed. Whether you are looking for an executive position or advice on how to grow your career, a career coach like Bobby Ed can help you find that perfect position. Thank you, Bobby, Ed, for taking the time to have this conversation with me. Let me know your thoughts about this episode with Bobby. Ed. And to learn more about Bobby Ed and Soar Career Services, visit www.soarcareerservices.com. Thank you for listening to Female Founders Podcast. That's it for this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast app or connect with us on warmail.com so that you don't miss our next episode. See you next time. Bye for now.